unlike any other form of sport, endurance auto racing demands a distinct form of discipline, a harmony of speed and patience, a race against yourself. beauty of Central California, the Monterey Bay Peninsula, and Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. Where we are for round four of the Rolex Sports Car Series. Well, we've not even gotten to the race yet, Dorsey. We've already seen the drivers grapple with the challenges of this racetrack, and you got to wonder what's going to happen when the green falls on 51 drivers. Now, they do have a split start. Is that going to help? Well, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're going to get the two different breeds across from each other, uh, away from each other, but it won't last very long for sure. This racetrack, two and a quarter miles, very slippery surface. It's one of the best road racing courses in North America. Drivers love to come and race on this type of a racetrack. But I'll tell you, these first laps, it's like on ice. Well, so much history here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. The drivers just ecstatic about returning to the natural terrain road courses. They love coming to places like this. We've left the Rovals for a while. We've gone to natural terrain circuits. The drivers are fired up. They're getting ready to be real fired up as they come down to look for the green. And you got to watch for trouble down here in turn two. It always happens. Not a really good start here. Now, yesterday, the green was really late. They let everybody get on, and there it is. We're green flag. Now the run down to turn two. Yes, a big jump. Oh, we're getting two starters. Luckily, that didn't turn into a big practice. This is where the trouble always seems to happen. Down into turn two, the hairpin. You can run too wide, it seems, but it's it's difficult. You can do it as long as everybody's playing fair and not pushing around on each other. But the problem is, if somebody does something wrong, it takes all the innocent bystanders with them. That's only the first half of the field. Well, the other thing, too, is it's cool here today we've got some sunshine on the track so we've got temperature on the surface itself but how long is it going to take the tires to get up to temperature i'd say at least two good solid laps before these guys can really let the hammer down on these cars boy talk about letting the hammer down it looks like bergmeister jorg bergmeister i should say in the 66 really putting the pressure on negre as you look at the gt start green flag for these guys they'll now make the run down to turn two see if they can get it right the dp boys did a good job and see if the gt guys can get along Side by side, Kelly Collins leads the way in the 17 BMW, the blue and white car out front, and it looks like the 21 trying to slide up the inside, the 22 car, I should say, Ian James. Wow, I'm impressed, they made it. That is very unusual. Mark Rapoff really talking to these guys sternly in the driver's meeting just an hour ago, telling these guys, look, we need to get some green flag racing under our belt before you guys start beating on each other. And it looks like Kelly Collins has been able to pull away here on the first lap. A few car lengths over Ian James. Oh, and here Whoa. we go. There's some passing going on. That's all up right, into so turn they, five, and, uh, and it worked out all right. So they didn't make it one lap before they start going wheel to wheel. Little contact there, but it looks like everybody comes through cleanly. It won't be long before those Daytona prototypes catch the back end of these. Now, these guys are all racing for position, so when the prototype guys get to them, they're not going to pull over. Side by side, climbing the hill. Still side by side as they come up towards the corkscrew. Collins makes the big jump off of the corkscrew as you ride on board the 22. One of the most difficult portions of the racetrack, I think, here, Dorsey, downhill out of the corkscrew. Yeah, it's very fast, and this is a corner right here, 10, that always scared me to death. I always figured sooner or later I was going to get it wrong. <laughs> if you do, boy. Well, maybe only do it once. And from the fastest corner into the slowest corner as they came onto the front straightaway back up front with the Daytona prototypes. Negre still leads over Bergmeister in the 66 machine. I tell you what, Negre, it was just so great to see him come back to this series and to come out here without very much practice in a brand new car and stick it on the pole. It just says so much about that young man's driving ability. It's, it's a shame he didn't get a full-time ride. Yeah, there are a lot of times in racing where you just shake your head and you wonder what is going on, what people are thinking. We've already got a GT car on to pit road. Looks like a drive-through. He hasn't stopped at any pit. He must have had a penalty for jumping the start, I think. 
Negre still leads Daytona prototype class. Bergmeister second. Stefan Johansson sits third, followed by Diaz in the 01 car. They pulled a little bit of a gap over the 19. It's Memo Gidley in the 19 car. Don't forget that 19 machine, the 10 motorsports car, led at the hands of Michael Valiente at Fontana. So that team really coming on strong. But the guy strong right now is strong all day yesterday, Negre. Boy, he is just showing these guys what speed he can give. Uh, all these cars have been modified all during this week. Everybody trying to make downforce. You're going to see all kind of winglets on the front of the cars. You're going to see winglets on the sides of the cars and back of the car. Everybody trying to make this car. This racetrack, which is so slippery, gets some grip to it. My question to you, Dorsey, is these guys like Negre, who have been out of the car for a while, obviously they have not forgotten how to drive, but isn't it the racecraft that may be a little bit rusty? Well, you know, he hasn't been in a car in a while for sure. Ozzy's driven a bunch of different things. He does a lot of testing for people, so at least he's familiar with racing the cars. But you're right, he hasn't gone head to head with all these other driver combinations. And when you go head to head with someone you don't know, you can't go to the commitment level that you would normally. So look at him running down through turn 10, through Turn 10, the fastest section of the racetrack. There's Memo Gidley in the 19th car. Negre still leads as they come through the slowest corner on the racetrack. Plenty of action early on. No reason to believe it won't continue when we come back to Laguna Seca right after this. This is where the cooperation really needs to work. Working through these GT cars and through the infield portion here, this is one of the areas of the racetrack that the drivers have said has very, very little grip. Negre with a good job cutting through traffic there, but Bergmeister all over the back end of him, and York was just spectacular under braking, and Montana looks up the inside. Not right now, not this time. Now this is where it's gonna get tricky. Watch when we get this next corner. This is turn six coming up. When we turn into the turn six corner, you start up the long uphill climb that goes to the corkscrew, and that's is where it really gets kind of congested. Yeah, and up here in the corkscrew, heavy braking and more GT cars. We're going to be saying that a lot today. Negri looks up the inside. He says, no, not this time. Not willing to risk it all this early in the race. He may not have raced for a while, may not have raced the season, Dorsey, but he's deep. Oh, he's up the inside. He's going to take the congestion. The, that, is, that was a brave move right there. I don't think that Ozzy realized that he was going to try that. Race, I don't think he's willing to risk it all oh, right now this. like Bergmeister is. Look at this. The Porsches on the inside are getting into bumping and banging mode, and you don't want to be outside of them when they do that. They spin. They're going to get you with them. Oh, look at man. Look gets shuffled to the back. Four wide. Up the front straight. He is now back. Look at the 19 car flashing the lights, trying to get past the GTs. And Negre screaming backwards right now. Don't well, know if he has trapped. a problem or he just got trapped. He's trapped. He's stuck to the outside with all the other DPs. That's, this is just almost, you know, you get stuck out like that, nobody's going to give you a break, and you won't let you back in. You just keep falling back. It's like, it's like pulling out of the draft on a restrictor plate race in Nextel Cup. On board. Oh, and Ace Austin. Right in front. Never oh, collide. I saw that coming. Holy moly. Frizzell spins, and I don't know. Ozzy tries to go to the outside, but it was the wrong move. That car had to go outside when it spun. That was the number eight that got hit, the car that spun. Brian Frizzell behind the wheel on board the 10 car. You saw the contact there. Wayne Taylor behind the wheel of the SunTrust entry when that contact happened. But it looked like he really had no place to go, Dorsey, as the eight car is yeah. underway. But it's doesn't bent, though. It's, he's bent the front suspension on it. You can see that. That car is, is uh, going to need a lot of help, and he'll be lucky to get it back to the pits without having another accident. Uh, you look at the rear wheel, the rear wheel on the right side is completely bent and broken. That car might be, have to be withdrawn. When you see it turn in here, watch the right rear wheel. Oh, he's going to have a hard time. Look at the right rear. Keep getting through the corner. Completely knocked off the car. I was talking to Gary Grossenbacher, who is the engineer on this car for the Frizzell brothers. Brian Frizzell behind the wheel right now, the younger brother. And he's, I asked him, I said, you know, these guys are so young, they're doing such a great job. Do you get a chance to engineer or your driver coach half the time? And he said, you know, it's about 50-50. I've got to do both. See if we can see what happens here on the replay on board just the SunTrust car. Just under brake. He gets a little bit too much rear brake by his. Wayne Taylor goes to the outside. Wrong move there as the car spins, goes wide, and collects Wayne. Just kind But, you know, look, I'm looking at Taylor's car. I don't think it's re. He might have escaped with not too much damage. 
Well, and that's one of the, the corners that we talk about. There's another look at it. You oh, see the contact man. there. Frizzell definitely gets the, the worst end of that. As long as it didn't hit Wayne's right rear wheel, if it just hit him in the side, you'd be okay. And Calvin? Well, down here in the Frizzell's pit, and uh, Brian started the race. Great qualifying performance by your brother, but your goal today was to stay out of trouble, but it hasn't turned out that way. No, Brian did a great job for our at Com and qualifying, you know, put the car seventh, you know. It's just such a bummer because, you know, we knew this race was going to come down to traffic, and obviously it bit him there. We saw he was in a kind of a mess, and it just got the car turned around, and it's a bummer. RX.com has really done a phenomenal job for us this year. We just can't get that result yet. They're looking for it. They led at Fontana, thought they were going to have a podium finish here today. It's not going to turn out that way, Brian. No, no. it's definitely not going to turn out that way today, Calvin. Looks like we've got a full course yellow. I'm sure there's some debris on the racetrack from that contact that was had there. As we began to catch the GT cars, things are heating up here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca. Stay with us, they'll only get hotter. the break we saw the problems with the six car he has been to pit road he was running third he had a almost has another problem there as he comes through turn five on the uphill to the corkscrew let's see if we can see what happened earlier doors watch the right rear of the car something's going to happen back there um oh he touched that other car he moved over that other he made contact with that with that other car let's see if we can get some answers from calvin fish well, Kenny's teammate is Mike Borkowski. Kenny had a great run there going up in the top three. What brought him into pit lane, Mike? Yeah, Kenny's doing an absolutely excellent job. I think he got hit in the left rear, a little body damage, and we got a left rear flat tire, so he had to come in prematurely. So hopefully we'll get back up there. And also over on the right side, guys, actually the rear spoiler had been kicked in as well, oh, so it was definitely we got a been crash in the action gal. somewhere. Body work all over the place. Oh, it's That's the, 25. The nose off of the 25 car. Chad McQueen behind the wheel right now. Here we'll see what happens. That's up yeah. into the corkscrew in the braking zone. Oh, I don't know if he touched him or I what. Couldn't tell. It didn't look like he touched him, I think. Chris, what have you got? Well, you guys can see that the nose on the 25 is missing right now. Chad McQueen hopped out of the car. Dominic Cicero hopping in. Dominic's been very quick all week, and as Chad has said a couple times, you know, hey, I'm just still trying to learn this car, pick up the pace out here. But it does look like a little bit of contact out here, and we've seen Chad go off the racetrack a few times. So hopefully he'll get this thing fixed, get Dominic out there, and hopefully they'll stay in the fight. Chad McQueen doing a, a good job. He doesn't have near the experience that some of these other drivers have, but doing a great job. Hasn't been that far off the pace, but very interesting there. I couldn't tell whether he touched the I, six or not. I don't think he did. I mean, it didn't look like it, but it certainly it came unfastened, and it doesn't need much air under it before. We got a full course caution now to pick up all this mess. Well, I was going to ask, you come over the hill there into the braking zone. Could the turbulent air have picked that up? We'll, we'll find out right here. here. I don't know if he would. No. No, it didn't. Oh, no. He never touched He it. never touched him. He touched the curb with the right front wheel, but it, uh, it was ready to go, and it just, like you say, it was the nose high attitude as it comes up over the top of the wind got underneath it and it wasn't fast and off she goes. Yeah, no contact there. I was thinking that the six car would have been moved if he had hit him right there in the braking zone. So it looks like just the turbulent air, maybe the, the rise in the track there caused that nose to depart. But that had to be a moment for Chad McQueen. It's kind of neat when that happened. Oh, 99's in and uh, it's got damaged crest. Yeah, Doris, also some uh, right front damage on the 99 here. Bob Stallings. Uh, had this car out early. These guys have been very fast this weekend. Alex Gurney was uh, quickest in one of the sessions yesterday. So not much time on this car. First race of the year, these guys uh, hopefully trying to get things fixed and uh, attempt the lead lap. Now, why would they not put a nose on that car? That's not going to run good like that. I, I, well, they may not have one. They they, they, I'd be they, looking to borrow one from somebody. They just picked this car up last week and did one day of testing in it. That's a brand new team. Alex Gurney sat at the top of the charts in one of the practice sessions, and that really says a lot for this team. And Bob Stallings doing a great job as well. Chris? 
Yeah, Doris, actually these guys do have another nose back here, so this car is very new. They've only had it for two weeks, but you know, you gotta remember this is their first pit stop in Rolex competition, so maybe they're just not on the game there. Yeah, because with that big hole in the front, the car's gonna have a bunch on their steer. Oh, one's in, Calvin. Well, the old one is in, and unbelievably, the 66 car did not pit, so they obviously planned a different strategy in. Luis Diaz has brought the old one machine in. You can see there that dive plane has been torn off there on the right front corner. Scott Pruitt is going to have to deal with a little bit of understeer. They may have made a tire pressure change here to uh, try and accommodate that situation. Waiting on fuel, tires are done. Good pit stop. Let's go down to Chris. Calvin, down here with the 54, Kellner's in the car uh, in the beginning of the race here. Terry Borchiller not feeling well this weekend, so Kellner's is going to run most of this uh, weekend in this car. These guys have had a tough go in the 2005 season, but they found a few things with the car this weekend. They've actually softened it up, something you wouldn't think they'd do at Laguna Seca, and the car's just a little bit more compliant, easier to drive, so having a pretty good go today. Well, you saw the official holding the 54.